Hi and welcome back. In this lecture I'd like to go through the various hardware components and the tools that you will need throughout this course. I'm going to start with the Raspberry Pi bench computer itself and its uh, almost finished version just so that you can get an idea of what we are aiming for, what is the end result going to be like. Uh, so what you've got here is the Raspberry Pi inside a box. I've cut openings uh, around the box back and front and I was able to, to make the touch screen with the Raspberry Pi and the other components fit inside this enclosure. I was able to also stick the camera on it, although with the camera I plan to do something uh, else entirely in order to mount it and to be able to manipulate it as well. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So that's what the bench computer is eventually going to look like. Now hopefully your uh, your skills in creating a nice enclosure out of a cardboard box are better than mine, but for the purposes of this demonstration, this is good enough. So the user interface is uh, is displayed now, and the idea is I'll be able to uh, tap on these buttons and then turn various devices on and off. I've got the camera as well here, also connected and operating. Just make sure it works. There you go. So it takes pictures as well as uh, interval images plus video. And I've got a tab for environment um, readings as well, although I haven't got the sensor connected. I'm going to turn this off and disassemble the device, so shut down. All right, and I will unplug it as well from power. Okay. So no power uh, present at the moment. So uh, let's see, I'm going to push the screen from the back in order to eject it from the box like that. Let's push the other side as well. All right. And I can separate it easily and I will <laughs> remove the camera from the enclosure to there you go. So the basic components for this project are number one, the seven inch touch screen. It's a color touch screen. Uh, you can get this from the Raspberry Pi Foundation website. And uh, I got it from Element 14, which is a reseller for the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Uh, it's a really nice screen. Uh, it allows you to do multiple gestures and you can read uh, taps from up to 10 fingers. Uh, we're not going to be using that many, of course, but uh, it just goes to show the capabilities of this device. Now on it, I'm just going to start unplugging devices. Okay, so let me remove power. Um, on it, I've got starting from the top, it's a bit hard to remove. I'm just going to be very careful not to break anything. <laughs> there we go. So what I've got here is the um, PyFace Relay Plus. So it's a hat that contains four um, relays. These are small power relays. So I'm not going to be using them to uh, switch and drive mains devices, but just small things as I'm going to talk about in the next lecture, things like LED strips and a small 12 volt fan. So this is all the, the this is the, the capability of these small relays. To drive larger devices, we'll have to use external relays like these. So this is a five volt relay that is capable of driving larger loads uh, up to, uh, let's see, 10 amps and 250 volts AC power. So I'll be showing you how to connect to these as well. More about this type of relay in a few minutes. So the PiFace uh, Relay Plus 
CAD also has a number of GPIO, so I'll be using those as well to drive our relays. Now, apart from that, of course, we need, hang on, I'll remove the camera module, we need a Raspberry Pi. So the nice thing about the screen is that it just has um, provisions to attach the Raspberry Pi on it. Uh, so the, the package comes with the screws and the spaces that you need to do this. In this project, I'll be using the Raspberry Pi 3, mainly because it comes with the Wi-Fi module integrated into the board. Plus, we get support to drive the Wi-Fi module from the uh, Raspbian uh, Jesse release of the Raspbian operating system. So that means that I'm not going to have to worry about uh, utilizing uh, either a wired Ethernet uh, connect, uh, connectivity or uh, Wi-Fi as a module plugged into a USB port. It keeps things a bit simpler this way. If you don't have a Raspberry Pi 3, and you've got something like a Raspberry Pi 2 uh, Model B, you can still use the exact same configuration uh, with the exact same touch screen. It's just that you're gonna to have to deal with the networking issue separately, uh, simply as plugging in an Ethernet cable or a USB Wi-Fi module would be enough. Uh, okay, moving on, you will need a power supply. I recommend that you get the Raspberry Pi, uh, the Raspberry Pi power supply, just to make sure that you've got enough power to drive the screen, plus the Raspberry Pi itself and the uh, Relay Plus hat. Uh, this one here uh, provides an output of 2.5 amps uh, at at 5.1 volts, so uh, it works quite well. Anything similar to this, of course, will also work. Next, I've got a the, the Raspberry Pi camera, and also invested in a small enclosure for the camera. It's only a few dollars extra. Uh, and the other thing that I did was to purchase a much longer ribbon wire, a ribbon cable for the camera. The one that comes with the camera is very short and it's not going to make it easy for you to manipulate the, 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 the camera so that it points to the right place as you wanted to. So uh, I purchased a, a longer ribbon cable just to make it easier to manipulate. What I eventually plan to do is to use something like this, a flexible Gunes holder so that I can uh, manipulate <laughs> the camera and make it point to the area where I'm doing my work and uh, uh, therefore be able to record the action on my workbench uh, like this. So you can think about what works best for you, whether something like this would be uh, uh, reasonable depending on your setup or something equivalent. Okay, Take this away. Moving on, you're gonna need storage. So I recommend uh, an SD card of at least 32 gigabytes of size, just so that there's ample space to store the operating system. Uh, plus all the images and videos that you'll be taking with your camera as well. Other than that, this the total size of the application itself with all the libraries and, and icons uh, is not that much. So if you don't have a 32 gigabytes SD card, you can easily get away with a smaller one like 16 gigabytes or something of that size. But don't go below 16 gigabytes, just not going to be enough space for your images and videos. Uh, during the development and the configuration of your Raspberry Pi, uh, you will need a keyboard. You can get uh, away without one, but having a keyboard will make things a bit easier. I'm going to show you both uh, doing the configuration with and without a keyboard. But again, uh, using a keyboard like this, this is a Bluetooth keyboard, uh, will make life a little bit easier for you. If you don't have a Bluetooth keyboard, then just look for a, an old USB keyboard and they will do as well just fine. So another nice to have thing is a keyboard. 
to plug to your Raspberry Pi during the, the early configuration of your Raspberry Pi OS. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the PiFace Relay Plus hat allows you to drive small power devices using uh, the uh, onboard small power relays. For anything larger than 12 volts and say about 2 amps of power, you will need larger relays like this one here that I showed you earlier. It's a Songli 250 volts AC and 10 amp relay. Uh, this will give you the ability to drive larger things such as, I'll just point to those now, such as a uh, soldering iron or a hot air SMD rework station. These are mains devices, so you need uh, a larger relay to drive. So something like this will do the job and I'll be showing you how to drive such a relay by designing uh, a driver board like this. I'll show you the process of designing this using KiCad um, and explain what these components are and, and how the design works. Of course, you can build something like this on a breadboard, but I don't really recommend it because this device, this relay, will, will be um, passing through mains voltages and power. So you might as well design something that can take up all that power. Uh, I've gone through, through a, a couple of iterations of the design. Uh, I'll be showing you the latest and greatest iteration, that one that I am comfortable with. Speaking of mains power, you will, if, if you eventually do want to follow the project up to that extent and drive mains uh, devices like my uh, SMD rework station, then there's a few things that I recommend that you definitely get. The first thing is a device like this. This is called a residual current device and it's there to protect you from faults, electrical faults that can cause current from a mains socket to pass through your body and other things but what we're worried about is through your body and cause damage to you which can lead to uh, significant <laughs> damage like a death. Um, so I'll be talking about this, I'll have a lecture about something like this, a device like this, a residual current device coming up soon. You will need cables. I got this from an old printer. I just cut the end of it and uh, now I've got a socket that will plug into my mains and that will provide power to a box like this. Inside this box I will have uh, my relay driver board and I will be providing power to mains socket something like this. And then the idea is that I'll be taking the lead from my mains device, like my soldering iron, and plugging it in here. And then I'll be using my uh, Raspberry Pi uh, workbench computer to drive those external mains devices. So a project box like this, you know, just around $10, there's enough space in here to have two of these mains sockets say the one of the, uh, like that, right next to each other, and enough space for two of these boards, one to drive each socket, and both of those getting power from the same mains lead. And the whole arrangement protected by a residual current device, like that. So that's uh, enough for now about mains power. Let's see, what else do I have? Um, yes, in, as far as the enclosure is concerned, uh, I will be using a box like this that I got from the post office. It's thick enough to provide enough support for the computer and its peripherals. Easy to manipulate as well, as far as opening holes are concerned. Uh, I'll be using a lot of duct tape to reinforce my construction, my enclosure. I'll show you an earlier attempt, an earlier design. So I found um, this box from 
I think a hard disk that I bought uh, a few months ago and I used this to cut openings through and uh, try out the bench computer uh, on my desk in a smaller form. It was a bit cramped so I eventually decided to go for something bigger like uh, this larger mailbox. I'm going to have the specifications and the dimensions for uh, for these boxes. It's just a, a recommended uh, box enclosure um, as well. You can get all this information in the notes for this lecture. You are also going to need a few other components such as um, a DHD22 sensor if you want to be able to get environmental readings uh, through your bench computer and of course there's a bunch of jumper wires, um, breadboard, um, resistors, diodes and things like that all necessary. So these are things that I assume that uh, most of you would have. I have a, again a detailed list of all the components in the lecture notes. Um, other bits and pieces. Uh, Connectors. I strongly recommend that you get connectors like these. These are uh, screw terminals. They allow you to easily connect uh, power to your to the devices that you'll be driving. So uh, it will look a little bit like this, where you've got a power supply. Let's see, you've got a power supply like this. You you plug it into your screw terminal, and then from here you can drive power to your small power devices. You, you can't see this, but this is a, an LED strip. It's one of the things that I'll be driving. So one of the devices, small power devices on my bench that I will be driving through the bench computer. And I also have a fume extractor. <laughs> so this is something that I made myself. It's made of two computer fans and then inside I've got a carbon filter and the purpose of this is to uh, to draw the smoke from my soldering away from me, uh, clean up the air as much as possible through the uh, carbon filter and then eject it the other way around. And I've got uh, a lead coming out of the fan and then at the other end I've got just a female screw terminal that I can use to plug it into power. So get uh, as many of these as you can. So about 10, I think, you'll be enough. Not just for this project, but for other things that you'll be doing, of course. So very useful uh, little components to have in your drawer. All right. Almost finished. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about other tools. Uh, this project is not really heavy in terms of tools, uh, you just need a simple multimeter like this. We'll just be measuring voltage, resistance and continuity, so you don't need anything fancy. This will do just fine. You also need wire cutters and wire strippers to make life easy. Screwdrivers. and a ruler. This is going to be useful when you are starting to design the enclosure and cutting holes through your box. So ruler will help you make your box a little bit better looking. <laughs> All right. Uh, and finally, an old power supply to drive those small power uh, devices as well. This one is something that I got from an old Dell screen. Uh, it gives me 12 volts DC, which drives both the LED strip and my fan. I'll be just using a single power supply for both of these devices. And one amp, uh, so yeah, one amp is enough for, for this purpose. Okay, now uh, it's quite a few components that I discussed and I know there's just uh, probably too much to remember so um, have a look at the link that I've got below in the screen and that will take you to a list of components and, and you can source uh, as much as you need from there. I suppose that you already have quite a few of those things in your drawer already. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. What devices you'll be driving?